Sorry, sorry, we are uh, more than a little late. We're actually we're very late. We got tied up. Uh, so next on our agenda, we have with us. Um, they, that we changed the agenda. Yes, and uh, and we because we are so late, we are going right to um, our jobs for Maine graduates which is uh, Dave Barang with his high school students. Nice to meet you all. Um, they are going to present to us so we'll know what JMG, Jobs for Maine Graduates, is really all about and who it involves. Dave, do you want to come up and then if you can kind of bring them up one at a time and introduce them or you can sit here. Yeah, I think we have a script that, we, that the students have tracked themselves. Okay, <laughs> that's great. Don't forget, tell us who you are. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jordan Scarpa. I'm a senior at Wyndham High School. These are my classmates, and we are here to tell you about the program JMG and what it means to us individually and personally. First, we're going to start out with like what it means and how it helps students like us across Maine. Well, hi, my name is Naisha Franco, and I'm a sophomore at Wyndham High School. Um, JMG for, um, stands for Jobs for Maine's Graduates, and we work with 6,500 students across the state of Maine. And from our um, high school, we have 45 members in the program, and our mission statement is to partner with public education and private business to offer results-driven solutions to ensure all Maine students graduate attain post-secondary credentials, and pursue meaningful careers. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mercedes Fickett, and I am a junior at Wyndham High School. Let us, let us tell you about our display. So on March 28th, our JMD team... Yeah, put our display. Bring it over. <laughs> Why don't you bring it over here so... We can get a better, better look at it. Hmm. That's cool. <laughs> so on March 28th, our JMG team, made up of only juniors and seniors, attended the annual statewide career development conference, or CDC for short along with over 700 high school students from 49 main high schools. We participate in competitions like public speaking, problem solving challenges, communication challenges, and job interviews. Um, hello, my name is Heath Ferritas and I'm a senior at Wyndham High School. And one of the competitions we did at the CDC was Marketplace and that's when we made our design. And we actually won a lot of trophies off of it and it was really fun, but yeah. <laughs> That's our design. So now let me tell you what JMG means to me. So JMG means to me as a junior in Wyndham High School. It means like we're all coming together and we're all a big huge family and we're trying to figure out what we have what we want to do as we get out of high school. And Mr. Brang has helped us has helped us with that. And I find it really, it's like a nice, it's a nice little family that we have because we're all in a classroom. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I have to agree with her on that. JMG is like a really good family. It's my second year in it. And just the place like you can go if you need help, like with homework or talking in front of people and you don't like it. <laughs> but... It helps you with everything. Helps you with jobs. Helps you with after school. And it's a really good place to be. Um, I started JMG when I was in seventh grade, and I like to say that this program really made me like more into the adult, and I'm more mature when I wasn't so mature. I was very immature, and I would always laugh and like take the things like this as jokes. But I would like to say that it really built my character and made me into a Nice young lady. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so 
my turn to talk now. <laughs> well, when I first started JMG, I thought it was just going to be a class where you get to mess around, basically ignore the teacher like every other classes, you know. But after after a couple classes, I realized that this is actually a class that will help us and prepare us for our future. Get us, it'll build our strengths, like public speaking. Before I started JMG, I would never in a million years sign up to talk in front of all of you guys today. But JMG just has helped me a lot, build a lot of my characteristics. I'm not really sure, but Mr. Barang has just, he's literally the best teacher anyone could ask for. He, he's not just a teacher, he's a friend to all of us. You can go to him whenever you need. Like, I have multiple times, just nothing class-related or school-related. He's always there to talk. And he's just the best teacher in the world. But I'm not just saying that because the situation we're in now. I swear to God, but he is. He is. I have him in a contact on my phone with a heart next to it. I swear to God. But man himself, Mr. Gray. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is uh, very kind words, but you can tell by uh, these students the way they handle themselves that this is a JMG exists uh, because you bring to it so you bring so much to it and you share that among yourselves. So that's what I, the JMG is as as was said is a statewide organization in its 26th year. Uh, there are uh, 6,500 students throughout the state ranging from 12 middle schools where Nay was in a middle school in South Portland in JMG when she transferred to uh, to Wyndham, we were really fortunate to have her continue on with JMG. And uh, it, there's a new initiative that's about, that's three years, of, this is the third year for it, where there are JMG, JMG specialists at the college level because of that transition time. Uh, what I have the pleasure of doing um, is one of, the pro, uh, one of the things that we do over the year after students graduate, and Athena is in this situation, a form, an alum of JMG and Wyndham High, is that as a, we keep in touch on a monthly basis, at least uh, over the course of a year after graduation. So it's building that network. It's it's uh, being a resource. It's it's helping. I you know I, I would argue that that year after high school is probably the trickiest. It's suddenly your world is is turned upside down in all really wonderful ways and all very scary ways. So so this is that's what we try to do is say how how can we help each other as a group and you do that so so well and uh, and how do you how can I help you and how and you help me as certainly as much as 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 I help you and it's just it's a tremendous pleasure the support we get from uh, the administration Mr. Howe Mr. Prince and the board is I, I I would hope that my colleagues across the state enjoy the same levels of support it's it's fantastic it's it's uh, it gets the best out of the program. You, it's, it's, you trust us, and uh, I just can't be, I can't speak more highly of, of this group and uh, and Wyndham High School and the district to provide us the opportunity that we've we've been provided. So, thank you very much. We have uh, we have some gifts for you all. So, if so Keith, do you want to? Yes, you may. But we also have a closing ceremony. <laughs> This is what you're going to talk about. Close. But we have a closing ceremony where we celebrate the year, and we have invitations as well. It's on the 18th. It's in uh, two weeks from tomorrow in the auditorium, 6 to 7, and you'll have that in. You're welcome to join us, please. So you thank have, you very much. You have you have quite a fan club there. <laughs> and that's why I'm coming back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I just wanted to say one more thing about Mr. Brain because he's that amazing. Just, just my favorite thing about him is that he doesn't talk to us as a class. He comes to each of us individually and like cares what we say and cares like well, care cares about like what we want to do in the future and gives us advice and helps us and like just my favorite thing. He doesn't talk to us as a general group. It's just individually and family so. yeah. you know you know before you get into your your finale thing here I, the one thing I'd like to tell all of you is that you have such a level of maturity it is like really unbelievable because you know you talked about public speaking I think it's totally amazing that all of you could get up there and that confidently that confidently and say what you're saying 
and it's obvious you all love what you're doing and and you've grown I'm sure from you know when you first went into the program I um, mean I'm a big fan well he knows anyway I'm a big fan I'm a big fan of the JMG anyway but you kids are just great I am and I'm so so happy that you were able to come before the board and uh, you know give everybody a better idea of what JMG is really all about now you can continue on with your Thank you. Thank you. Look at that, we get presents Thank too. You. Oh, wow. Thank you. Yay. Let's put my candy in. So while you guys are, are handing those out. Thank you. If I could just say something really quick to you guys, um, I know I think all of you must know Isabella. She's yeah. So I just have to thank you guys. I work with the program that she's here, and she just had nothing but amazing things to say about you guys while you got year long. You really made it a really awesome, awesome year for her. So thank you guys very much for that. So may I take a real quick photo? <laughs> sure. <laughs> you want all? Okay. So, so everybody stands up. Everybody stands up, and they can kind of scatter around. There you go. One, two, three. One more. One. Did I say Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. Nice job. <laughs> shall we do it? Yes, they shall. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I mean, I think it's great. Thank you very much. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, watch out for the wires. Watch out. Okay, um. Alrighty. We love when we get company, especially when it's such great company. You know, it's a great, it's a great, great, pro it's a great program. Um, and you know, hopefully, yeah, I know. Alrighty. So next on our agenda, uh, we have our director of adult ed. Um, Mr. Tom Nash is going to give a program update. You can either go up there, Tom, or you can go there, either one. Yeah, go for it. Just make sure that the mic is facing you, that's all. Testing one, too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sitting there give you handouts. That's what I did. Watch out for the cords. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Just use a gun. Using my time passing this out there, right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Turn this down. There we go. Well, I thank you for this opportunity. I, I know it's 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 late in the evening, um, uh, but I, I appreciate the time that you've given me to share with information about about our program. And I'll go through uh, uh, the handout. Uh, it's a PowerPoint without the without the computer, um, but everything is is right in front of you there. Um, I. Like like anything, like any good teacher, you want to make sure you prepare for your class. And I figured this was an opportunity to, um, to educate you as to what we do. And so I asked, I reached out to the students. I asked Marge, said, what does the school committee want to know? So she said, well, what is adult education? Who do, how does it benefit the community? What kind of numbers do you have? 
anything new going on with adult ed. So that's what I, I took this opportunity to say, I'm bringing something to you that's hopefully going to be relevant and meaningful to you tonight. Okay, so that's, so you're my students for the evening, all right? Okay. So what is adult education? I always, always start off by saying, well, what do you think it is? What is it to you? What is adult ed to you? Educating adults. Educating adults. What is it to you? Marge, what is adult education to you? An opportunity to, to learn more of anything, whether it be uh, educational-wise or for my own amusement. Okay. It's amazing what people don't know about us. And it's amazing sure. what people still believe about us. I can't tell you how many people say to me, oh, you, you're just night school. You're just arts and crafts. You don't do anything else besides that, do you? So this is my opportunity. I know this is being broadcast uh, to the community, so it's our chance to kind of share with the community as to a little bit more about what we do and who we serve. So um, you have our, our mission and vision. You've seen that before during um, school board presentations for the budget. We established that several years ago, and we kind of used that, that mission and vision to filter our decisions through when we decide what kind of classes we're going to offer, what programs and services we're going to provide. So, and it says right in there that we, provide, we, meet, we try to meet the academic career and personal pursuits of a diverse adult population. So it is, it is not, it's not just the fun classes, it's not just the arts and crafts, it's a lot more than that. And our, and our vision states that we, um, we, we are a leader in delivering, the, or we want to be the leader in delivering needs-oriented programming, encouraging lifelong learning. That's a really big topic for Secretary DeVos, by the way, lifelong learning. Just want to make sure you, she's really, she really is supportive of lifelong learning. And I can tell you a little bit more about that someday if you'd like to hear. Um, and it, it mentions right there in our vision how we can benefit the community that we hope that we will, um, it'll help with individual fulfillment, community prosperity, and a positive social change. So we really feel that adult ed can have an impact there. And we have major programming goals, again, that we use to help um, decide what types of programming we're gonna offer. And I think the thing that's most important about our goals is that we wanna make sure we provide a technology-rich environment. And we've been doing that since I've been involved with adult ed, uh, not just here, but other programs. But we want to make sure that a, the technology is in the hands of adults that can't afford to have it. So it's the iPods, it's the iPads, it's the, it's the laptops, it's the smart board. It's having a, a Wii system in our program that they can use that as, a, as kind of a reward. Um, and now we have uh, the Tamburg system, which is a video conferencing system where we can access classes from all over the state, all over the country, all over the world. We can both broadcast and receive uh, classes. So we might make sure we have a technology rich environment. The next page is um, program and services and it just tells you again what we do, the, 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 run, the gamut, the breadth of the work that we do in adult ed. We offer programs Tuesday, uh, Monday, sorry, Monday through Thursday, so five, uh, four, day, <laughs> four days and four nights a week. We also have classes on Friday. We've also had classes on Saturdays and Sundays. So we do run classes Pretty much every day of the week. We try to avoid Sundays when possible, but we do have classes that help meet, again, the needs of the community. We provide year-round services, so it's not just the school year, but we do have classes and programs, mostly academic classes in the summertime. And it tells you there the, the, the types of programs we have. Academic programs, business training and planning, career advising, career pathways, college transitions, personal enrichment, and then testing services. And so I, how, I, how I chose to approach the rest of this was to kind of share with you um, a little bit about the types of the classes, the funding that, that, that supports those programs, the cost of the participants, and that kind of an age range and maybe numbers that you might see in those, in those programs. So the next page is academic programs and services. You can see that it's offered free to Maine residents, it has to by statute. It's funded through federal grant money, state subsidy, and local appropriation. We serve students ages 17 to 75 or, or older. I think the old student I had in my class, one of my classes was 90. Um, we have uh, graduated 139 people in the last four years. This year we'll hopefully graduate 26. So that's 165 people will graduate in five years. And it shows you the type of programs we have, adult basic education, ASE is adult secondary, adult secondary education, so whether it's the high school diploma or the high set, which is the formerly the GED. 
ESOL is English for Speakers of Other Languages. And then you see the totals and how it's kind of changed over the years. So that's a five-year five year total. Next page. Uh, and if you have any questions, please feel free to stop me. But again, I know you have a, a long night ahead of you still. So the things that we're really, um, I think, most uh, – we focus most most recently on is workforce development. I don't think people think of adult as a workforce development arm, but it's actually part of our uh, new uh, federal legislation, the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, that requires us to make sure adults are ready for the world of work. So we can be the on ramp. We can be through, whether it be through basic skills instruction or other types of basic programs. We can be the on ramp to get them into a better uh, better paying job. Or you know whether they want to be uh, whether they want to upskill or reskill. We hopefully we think we can be a part of that. So we are a part of workforce development, and we actually require to work with all Title One, Title Three, and Title Four programs. And we've been having meetings recently about that, and we actually have a two-day meet, two meeting starting tomorrow to talk about what that looks like uh, for us in Maine. Um, but we do business training and planning, so we do on-site professional development. Uh, we do a career advising in what's called career pathways. Again, it's that kind of on ramp to a um, to a license or a certificate or a better paying job. We have to make sure our programming meets those meets those requirements. You can see it's funded through participants or local businesses. It generates ten to fifteen thousand dollars annually. It's for ages seventeen and older. And over the last five years, we've had about three hundred people taking part in those kinds of programs. We also know that our workforce is aging. And that we have a we have a part, I think, in making sure that we tre retrain the workers that are here for the jobs that either do exist now or may not exist, may be new jobs in in, in, a, in a few years. And that a high school education is just not going to cut it. We have to make sure those people are trained. The next uh, category is college transitions. Uh, we collaborate with the Great New Gloucester Adult Education Program. We really feel it's important to collaborate with other adult ed programs. We can't all provide all services to all people. Um, and it's a comprehensive program, basically providing uh, services to the stu students who are not quite ready to go to college yet. So what can you do? Uh, what, how can you advise them? Uh, what kind of skills can you help them improve, whether it's basic math or writing skills or even success in college, like study skills? We have classes in that, too, as well. And you can see it's offered little no cost. There's a grant that, grant that funds that. Uh, and we've served over 80 stu 84 students over the last five years. Uh, we also are our satellite site for St. Southern Maine Community College. So it runs the gamut. We actually then uh, place students at SMCC. We've actually had classes in the afternoon at Wyndham High School for Wyndham High School students to take a college level class and get dual credit for that as well as for high school. The last section there is personal enrichment. And again, people, that's what oftentimes people associate with us with. But it is a really important part of our program. It brings in, um, you can see, almost 11,000 people over the last five years. Uh, it helps to enrich their lives. That makes keeps them connected to the community. Sometimes those students then come in and they say, "Hmm, do you have a class in? I need to get a better job. Maybe I can talk to you about that. All right, my my brother can't read. Can I? Can you help me with that? So oftentimes it's a it's a way to get in the door. It's a way to get them uh, interested in your program. Um, so it, tell, it shows you the types of classes we have for personal enrichment. We do testing services, AccuPlacer, which is a college placement test, the CASAS, which is a program placement test. That's the required test that we need to use to place all of our students in academic programming to show placement as well as to show progress. We do high stakes testing through Castle World. We're a Microsoft Office certified testing center. We do the high set now, which is a computerized test. We also do what's called the World of Work Inventory, which is used for a new tech hire grant. And again, those services are mostly offered free of charge. Some are, some are fee-based. And it varies on the type. Okay, how am I doing? A few more minutes left here? You're doing good. All right. All right. So the next thing is benefits to the community. And I think this is what Marge was asking. Well, why why do people why should people support adult ed? What 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 is it good for? not what is it good for, but what what can it do? So it provides opportunities for personal and professional growth, improved health and wellness, provides community access to district resources. I, I hear so often that people come into our program and say, it's so nice that since I don't have kids in school anymore that I can, I can realize kind of utilizing the, you know, the, the facilities and it, I can see my tax dollars at work. I get a benefit from it, even though I'm not, again, have no uh, school age children any longer. Uh, it increases, increases support for RSU 14 initiatives in the annual budget. Uh, it has a positive impact on a child's academic success. The greatest indicator of a child's success in school 
is the educational level of their mother. It's research has shown, statistics show that if the mother's educational level is at a high level, or if she's working on improving that, that'll be a, um, the most significant factor in the success of their child. It's really important. So that's why family literacy programs are so important. Uh, we do have a, a, an on-site, believe it or not, we have a, um, a, a it's called a preschool playgroup. Brings in kids and their parents, introduces them to um, integrated activities, parent-child activities, literacy activities. So that's really important to make sure you keep that in mind. It also increases community engagement, economic and workforce development, realizing every dollar invested in adult ed returns six dollars to the community. Why? Increased employment, reduced cost and unemployment, health care, social services, and incarceration. So statistics show that investment in adult education is a good deal. And that's actually the message we're trying to make sure uh, we get to Washington. Some of, those, some, of you, some of you may know that I'm also uh, the president of our National Adult Education Association. It's the Coalition on Adult Basic Education. And I do get a chance on occasion to speak uh, in Washington. Uh, I just met with Secretary DeVos and met with uh, Senator Collins and King and uh, Shelley Pingree. And to just let them know how important it is to support adult education and adult literacy. And actually, there's a, one of the handouts I gave to you is called Educate and Elevate. Uh, it's a campaign that we helped develop uh, that really does talk about how it's important to raise up. You know, it's giving a hand up, not a handout to people. And it's how important that is. And I think the statistics on there, you kind of can take that and, and bring it down to the, to the state level and to the local level when it says that low-skilled adults are two times more likely to be unemployed, three times more likely to be in poverty, four times more likely to be in poor health, and eight times more likely to be incarcerated. And the fact that there's 36 million adults in this country that can't perform English at a, certain, at a level to be successful in the world of work or perform simple math. That's astonishing to me. And the fact that we have, um, it says here we have funds, unfortunately funds in, in this country that can serve uh, 1.5 million of that 36. So the challenge is big for us as well uh, on the local level, state level, and national level. And lastly, um, just the initiatives uh, I mentioned before that uh, we're involved with the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, and that really is um, um, all about workforce development. It, uh, it's helping, again, adults uh, raise themselves up, become uh, reskilled, upskilled, and to um, have a better, better life, more productive life. So that's what we're all about. Um, the last thing is that we invite you to our adult education graduation on Thursday, June 15th at 7 o'clock at the Wyndham High School Auditorium and Performing Arts Center, and everyone is invited to come. So that is my quick whirlwind tour of, of adult education and what we do. And I hope um, that you've, you've learned a few things tonight. I guess I should ask you, was there anything new that stood out for you tonight that you're saying, wow, I had no idea adult education does that, or I had no idea that that was, has such an impact on your community. Anybody? Yeah, it's a few things. What stands out for you the most? Well, there was uh, the, how many different levels that you guys offer the program. For the academics? Basic, so, yeah. So basic skills instruction is for the under, under eighth grade level, so those are coming in, they're either reading you know, pre-K up through eighth grade level, and then secondary is preparing to get their high school credential. Yeah, I didn't know you were working with the uh, Southern Maine as well. Yeah, and we're also actually work I didn't mention here, but we're also um, working with the Wind, uh, the Maine Correctional Center in Wyndham. So we bring enrichment classes down there, but also our high set classes, and then most recently a college transition class for 22 male in inmates who really want to go on to college when they when they are released. So we're helping them prepare to uh, prepare for the skills they may need to be successful in college. So. If you had to take a guess, how much have you increased what is done at adult ed in the last 10 years? I keep thinking back to, you used to send that bitty bitty little book out that looked like that. We used to increase about 20% a year when I first started here. I think it's kind of leveled off over the last, um, or the last three or four years. I think it waxes and wanes uh, with the economy and what types of classes are going to be mm -hmm. more important, whether people have discretionary money to spend on enrichment classes or whether they're looking for a job and they've just recently been laid off. So um, the types of classes will will vary depending on, on how, how things are going in the economy. Um, we saw a little bit of a downturn, believe it or not, I think uh, with uh, 
uh, during the last election cycle. I think people were just a little cautious about where things might end up and they were kind of holding on to their money a little bit more closely. So um, some numbers did drop in the uh, in Richmond area, but um, that seems to have been uh, picked up. So for 10 years, how much have we grown? Well, I've been here for 13 or 14. I came with Sandy. Um, boy. It's a lot. It's been, it's been a lot. When I first got here, I think we had about 1,000 enrollments. Now we have annually over 3,000. So I think I do my quick math. You have to see what that is for our percentage. But uh, um, and we def definitely the breadth of our programs has changed. Right. Um, and uh, we do try to meet, the again, the needs of the community. So if there are certain types of classes they want us to offer, we try that. Um, we try to offer classes up in Raymond. It hasn't been as successful as we'd like. We're also looking to partner with uh, the, our library up there to bring and to make sure we can bring at least some more programming uh, to that area. And also getting a video conferencing system up into either uh, Jordan Small or the elementary school up there. And I know you've done a lot of retraining for the companies also. Yeah, whether it be there, they, mostly they come to us. And uh, we have done some training for the for Wyndham, Wep Wyndham Weaponry. That's always hard to say for some reason. And, um, and other local businesses, um, mostly it's Excel, bookkeeping, you know, you know, uh, QuickBooks, accounting, Excel classes. Um, but we offer, we, we're available to, to bring our services to businesses or provide uh, what's called contract, individualized, individualized contract training to businesses, whatever their needs may be. So. That's cool. Anybody got any questions, comments? Cool. Um, Tom, I was hoping you could give me a little bit more insight as far as the academic programs that you guys offer, um, specifically the high school completion. Can mm -hmm. you give me a little bit more information about that? Yeah. Um, well, we actually have a, a Wyndham High School diploma that students can get, and they only need 20 credits to do that. Uh, it's been a um, plan that's been in place, I think, since I want to say the early 80s or 90s. Um, it's something that the state has looked at um, updating as well, the high school diploma um, requirements. But students can come to us and they usually take that if they they want to get their high school diploma, they might have three or four classes, three or four credits to get, and they'll go that route. Um, if they have a lot more, um, if they have uh, more credits that they need under that, you know, they end up going the high set, which is a high school equivalency test. It's It took over for the, it replaced the GED. Mm -hmm. So it's five subjects. It's, um, it's math. Um, English, which is writing, uh, language arts, uh, science, and social studies. And it runs a gamut of uh, content in all of those areas. So they have to get a passing score. If they get a minimum passing score that's set by um, the state, then they get a, what's called a main state diploma or equivalency diploma. Um, we offer those classes. Um, we don't have enough uh, students to offer specific um, math class or specific English class. So it's oftentimes done in a lab setting. So it's individualized for the student. Uh, we try to make sure also that that the courses um, meet their um, meet their interest. So it might be someone's interested in, in race car driving. So you tie that into uh, their English class. So their research on, re on 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 race car driving and their papers and everything else you know revolves around interests for those students. So we have the flexibility to do that, which is nice because uh, it's. Either it's a small group, two or three students working on, on a specific class, or it's students individualized, uh, having individualized plans uh, to meet their English or science or history or <laughs> fine arts class. Um, does that answer your question? It does. Yeah, and, it's, and they're free. They're out, by main stature, they have to be offered free. We can charge for materials, but otherwise uh, they get that free of charge. And what are the hours for, that you offer those classes? Um, we actually have classes from 9 in the morning until 9 at night, Monday through Thursday, um, and Fridays a uh, few hours in the afternoon. But uh, They don't obviously run that long, but uh, class might run from 9 to 11 or 11.30 in the morning. Uh, we've had some classes that run from 12.30 to 3, and then other classes that run uh, 3.30 to 5, <laughs> some run 6 to 6. To, uh, actually, our lab runs from 5 to 8 o'clock <clears> at night. Um, so we yep. try to meet, you know, have knowing that adults have different work schedules and responsibilities, whether it be childcare or otherwise. Um, uh, we make sure we offer different um, different hours of the day for for students. Is there uh, for that particular thing? Is there a min um, minimum age? It's um, seventeen. Okay. There have been on occasion with school with Sandy's approval. There might have been a sixteen-year-old uh, that has an immediate need. Um, 
you can think of some of the needs that you've dealt with, I think, on the school school board uh, that uh, they need to get out of um, the high school for various reasons, um, and they can come to us uh, with with permission from Sandy. But um, that's very rare that we have a 16 year old. A 17 year old uh, happens uh, quite often. Uh, other than that, it's uh, 18. To take most of our adult ed classes that are non-academic related, it's 18 and out of high school. If you wanted to take a computer class or the or a yoga class or one of our job trainings classes, so. so you have to be out of high school in order to take these high school completion classes. If you're taking, you can. Um, that's a good question. Um, we do have some students that are taking that are still enrolled at Wyndham High School that can't come and take a class with us because they need an English class or they need a math class to get that one credit or half credit before they graduate. So they can still do that. More often than not, um, uh, both the high school administration and adult ed um, decides that it's, and in Sandy as well, it might decide it's a better placement for them to come to us. So they uh, unenroll from the high school, come to our program, and then can enroll in the high school diploma class or the high set and then work their way through, through that. Um, and that can be 17, 18 to do that. Great. Anybody else have? <coughs> thank you very much. Well, thank you, Rich. I appreciate your time. And I would like, I, having seen the JMG students here, I, I would like at some point to bring some adult ed students to you and have you hear from them. Uh, some of our English as a, uh, English speakers of other language students, mm -hmm. some of the stories they would like to share with you. And, uh, and even those students who are working on getting their high school credential, I think, uh, nice for you to hear. You got a hand pick up my feet in? What's that? You got a hand pick up my feet in? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, there's some, I think if, if, you come to, if you come to the graduation, you'll hear some, I think we've got three or four students already that want to speak at graduation, so hopefully you'll get a chance to, to see oh, that and good. hear them there. So. Excellent. Thank you all for your time. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. So, believe it or not, we're not too far off schedule. Well, actually, that's because we sent to our daughter away. <laughs> uh, next on our agenda is uh, the renewal of the administrative contracts. If I could have a. I move to approve the superintendent's recommendation to grant extended contract status for 2017-2018 to the following administrator, Phil Rossetti, the assistant principal at Wyndham High School. Um, Don, you want to give just a brief explanation of what's to, different uh, here? Yep, let me get this on. Happy to. Um, when we have a new administrator, essentially they have uh, two one-year contracts before they go to a two-year agreement. So that's why he stands alone. That's why he stands alone. He's one of our newbies. <laughs> so to speak. Although so he's been speak. with us for a while. Yes, long time. I know he has. <laughs> okay. Give me a second. Okay. Any comments? Nope. All those in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you. I move to approve the superintendent's recommendation to grant extended contract status for the 2017 through 2019 to the following administrators. Chris Howell, the principal of Wyndham High School. Randy Crockett, principal of Jordan Small Middle School and Raymond Elementary School. Kyle Rhodes, the principal of Wyndham Primary School. Danielle Danini, the principal of Manchester Elementary School. Andrew Patton, principal of Wyndham Middle School. Crystal Vargo Ward, the assistant principal of Manchester Elementary School. And Deb McAfee, the assistant principal of Wyndham High School. Second. Okay, we have a motion a and a second. There are, um, if you notice, there are a couple of folks missing off of this list, and um, I think it's public, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, um, Deb Hutchinson is retiring this year, so she's not on here for a renewal. And Mark Dronzik is leaving us. He's going. He's moving back. <coughs> I forget where he, what state he came from, but he's moving. I think he's interested in California, but also uh, advanced degree. So I think he's weighing his options. Yeah. So that's why this. Uh, those two are missing. Did you have something you want well, to say? Well, isn't it uh, Mr. Patton's second year? Um, 
also the Navy on the second, first year, or uh, one year of term? He completed two. He did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. <coughs> my, my math is off. Sorry. Okay. Are we all set? Okay. All those in favor? Okay. It is unanimous. Okay. Who wants to read? <laughs> who's, who's good with names? Who would like to read the next one, which will be the second year probationary teachers? I'm reading third year, I'll, so. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Okay. Um, I want to apologize in advance if I can. <laughs> <it anymore. laughs> okay. Uh, I moved to approve the superintendent's recommenda uh, recommendation to grant second year probationary status to the 2017-2018 school year to the teachers listed here. Christina Fitzgerald, special education teacher, Jordan Small. Laura Kudlaw, health teacher, Jordan Small. Rachel Williams, music teacher, Jordan Small and Manchester. Sally Plummer, speech, Jordan Small and Raymond Elementary. Haley Durkan, fourth grade teacher, Manchester. Rachel Pelletier, fourth grade, Manchester. Tracy Doyle, first grade teacher, Raymond Elementary. Stacy uh, Anozuski, Mm -hmm. uh, three fifths English teacher, Wyndham High. Um, Nicholas Beiser, chemistry teacher, Wyndham High School. Megan Fleming, guidance counselor, Wyndham High School. Natalie Nelson, high school Latin teacher, Wyndham High School. Jennifer Tabor, math teacher, Wyndham High School. Corey Donato, sixth grade teacher, Wyndham High School. Doug Elder, seventh grade math and social studies, Wyndham Middle. Sorry, that's it. I missed one there. Yep. Uh, Warren Gale, Special Education, in the Middle. Jillian McDonald, Special Education, in the Middle. Amanda Mayo, Librarian, in the Middle. Laura Trigo, Trigo, Guidance Counselor, in the Middle. Lindsay uh, Arbor, Third Grade Teacher, in the Middle. Katie. Uh -uh. Primary. Primary. Primary, that's what I said, women primary. Katie <laughs> uh, EA, second grade teacher, women primary. Casey Dubay, second grade, women primary. Alexander Jeffrey, special education teacher, women primary. Chelsea Michaud, first grade teacher, women primary. Carolyn uh, Skar Skarpinski, second grade teacher, women primary. Kate Story, first grade women primary. Kristen Stover, first grade women primary. Jennifer Vasilevskis, art teacher women primary. Jenna uh, Vermillion, first grade women primary. Once again, I apologize if I just pronounced the name. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any comments? Anything from anybody after that long list? Seeing none, all those in favor? It is unanimous. Now we move on to the third year probationary. I move to approve the superintendent's recommendation to grant third year probationary status for the 2017-18 school year to the teachers listed here. Melissa Boire, Special Education Academic Interventionist, District-wide. Adina Basler, Grade 6, Jordan Small. Paulina Angus, formerly Goyette, 5th grade, Manchester. Lisa Smith, Phys Ed, Teacher 1 5th, Raymond Elementary School. Kayla Vangelist, third grade teacher, Raymond Elementary. Dana Burbank, a guidance counselor at Wyndham High. Brandon Champion, social studies teacher at Wyndham High. David Samato, math teacher, Wyndham High. Barton Says, special ed teacher, Wyndham High. Natalie Flynn, special ed, Wyndham High. Denise Goulet, math teacher, Wyndham High. Carrie Jolie, the nurse at Wyndham High. Kai McDonald, social worker, Wyndham High. Allison Reynolds, math teacher, Wyndham High. Jen Shapiro, English teacher, Wyndham High. Oh, Kevin Roy. Kevin Roy. Oops, Kevin Roy, English teacher, Wyndham High. Thank you. Adrian Schettenhelm, alternate ed teacher, Wyndham High. Samantha Brink, special ed, Wyndham Middle. Alyssa Cameron Hills. 7th grade teacher at Wyndham Middle, Caitlin Sorensen, special ed teacher at Wyndham Middle, Jody Demons, 1st grade at Wyndham Primary, Patricia Hefner, 2nd grade teacher at Wyndham Primary, and we also need to add Joseph Boudreau, industrial technology teacher at Wyndham Middle School. Second. 
Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any comments, questions? Okay, all those in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you. Now the teachers, the continuing contract status. I move to approve the superintendent's recommendation to grant continuing contract status for the 2017-2018 school year to the teachers listed here. Elizabeth Moran, ESL teacher, Jordan Small, Ralph DeSarno, phys ed teacher at Manchester, Leah Fisher, grade four teacher at Manchester, Sarah Zima, fourth grade teacher at Manchester, Stephen Ginn, the guidance counselor at Wyndham High, Joseph McLaughlin, the art teacher at Wyndham High, Vanessa Michaud, science teacher, Wyndham High, Natalie Scovron, technology integration specialist at Wyndham High, John Ziegler, math teacher, Wyndham High, John Condello, teacher, grade 7, Wyndham Middle, Tyler Starkey, teacher, grade 8 at Wyndham Middle School, Aaron Tallon, phys ed teacher, Wyndham Middle, Kara Casey Pascal, kindergarten teacher, Wyndham Primary School, Courtney Espeo, teacher, grade 2, two-fifths, Wyndham Primary, Jenny Hopkins, teacher, grade 2, Wyndham Primary, Jessica Melcher, teacher, grade 3, Wyndham Primary, Michelle Patch, guidance counselor, Wyndham Primary, and Kayla Vanna, kindergarten teacher at Wyndham Primary. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? It is unanimous. Okay, next on our agenda is the presentation of the 2017-18 district school calendar, which we have a copy of. Um, Christine Hessler had presented this at, to us at a previous meeting, so we basically, uh, I think, I think we all agreed at that time that we could make this uh, motion without her being here to go through it again. Mm -hmm. The 2017 18 district school calendar. Second. Okay. Any comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? It is, was that unanimous? Mm -hmm. oh. Who disapproves? Who? You haven't asked for opposed yet. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Who's opposed? I'm sorry. <laughs> Who's opposed? <laughs> oh, two opposed. Would you like to share? Sure. Why? Um, while I respect the work that Christine did, um, I really don't like the fact that um, there's three days in the month of August. Um, I know it's really not going to make too much of a difference, but I feel as though that um, if we have three days during the month of August next year, I am probably going to vote the same exact way. I really don't want to see school during the month of August. Well, I will. I think you were out that day, but I will. I will tell you on Pete's behalf that he brought this same thing up to I Christine. Yeah, no, oh, you were here. Right. That's okay. right. Yep. And so she is I know going that to. There's uh, this many different dissimilar. school districts, um, but I'll be honest with you. I will probably send an email out to a lot of the other school board members in the other districts and let them know that I am going to be voting no on the calendar every single time that uh, I see three days during the month of August. That's fine. That is fine. But you remember her explanation, right, about I the do. dissimilar days and all I that, yep. which is not her. I mean, I want to let everybody know you're not alluding to the fact that yes. it has nothing to do with Christine. It's Absolutely the whole show me all day. Okay. So we have two opposed. Got that? <clears throat> okay. We have approved... Wait a minute. Wait. Oh, wait a minute. Four to two. Four to two. And the weight doesn't count, right? Right. <laughs> I'm checking. Um, yeah, two two windows. Oh, we've got it. Okay, we're all set. That's right. Oh, okay. that would have been cool. <laughs> 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 yeah. You would have been forced to be on the committee that we did the calendar. <laughs> yeah, right. oh, I know. I move to adjourn the meeting. Second. Okay, all those in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>
Push the button.